This was an L-shaped hill. <laughs> It is really, really uh, traumatic to see uh, the collapse of, of a massive structure like that. Uh, right now, uh, we have the fire rescue. They are in search and rescue mode. They are uh, trying to identify survivors. I know they have made contact um, uh, with some, and they are, they are doing everything they can to save lives. I say to the people of Florida, whatever help you want that the federal government can provide, we're waiting. Just ask us. We'll be there. We'll be there. vaccination front, there is more concern and confusion today as the head of Pfizer now says we'll likely need a booster shot 12 months after you're fully vaccinated. Senior health correspondent Monica Robbins joins us now to sort it out. Monica, I know we've heard about booster shots in the past, but uh, I guess the big question would be, why would we need a booster shot? It kind of seems like the, the two dose already included a booster shot in comparison to previous vaccinations that we've had. Yeah, you could say that, but the booster shot concept is really not new. We've been talking about this for several months now, and for a couple of reasons. One, we know the vaccine. Eventually, like natural antibodies, if you've been infected, it will wane. That protection will wane. And COVID is not leaving the planet anytime soon. It keeps mutating and creating these new variants, and we will need a boost of protection to fight those off. So it's very possible we're going to need a COVID shot every year, just like we do with the flu shot, just to keep up with this virus as it continues to mutate. All right, so if we need one for Pfizer, what about Moderna and the others? Yeah, I think it's safe to assume that we're going to need one for all of the current vaccines out there. In fact, Moderna plans to have its booster shot available by fall to protect people going into cold and flu season. And on a positive note, as more people do get vaccinated or naturally infected, the pace of the mutations is expected to slow down. But that doesn't mean we won't need some form of protection as years go by. Moderna, though, is working on a two-in-one shot that will contain both the COVID vaccine and a flu shot. So that could be incredibly convenient. It definitely is going to be convenient because, you know, you get your flu shots every year. Do you, you know, we could end up getting the COVID shots every year as uh, the mutations kind of continue on. We've talked about that before, Monica. Now, a big question, can we mix and match the third dose? Meaning, can we have two doses of Pfizer and then you get the third dose that's Moderna? You know, research is looking into that, especially in Europe, because they had all the, the issues with the AstraZeneca vaccine. But I think it's based to wait for the data to come out. I, I know they are researching that. So let's take our guidance from the CDC and the FDA as soon as we get enough data to say that's a good thing or not. Monica Robbins, great insight as always. Thank you so much. There's coercion and then there's downright cruelty, isn't there? The CEO 
of Make-A-Wish Foundation, the charity. The charity that gives wishes to kids who are terminally ill, coming towards the end of their lives, dying. In some circumstances, kids who have faced extreme trauma, who just want a bit of positivity in their lives. The CEO has come out to say that he's took guidance from the CDC. And any travel that's involved, any being in crowds, it will require these kids to be jabbed and their families to be jabbed. They will need to be jabbed if they are to be granted a wish. It's faced a lot of backlash, as I'm sure you can imagine, including some of their patrons coming out to say, if this is the case, then I will no longer be a supportive patron. I'll no longer be one of these celebrities and people that they use to grant wishes to these children. There are, of course, so many examples as to why some of these kids, if not a lot of these children, will be unjabbed. The health aspect to it, a lot of these kids are terminal, so there's a health aspect to this, but there's also the choice aspect, isn't there? The choice from not only the child, but their parents and the families. They might want choice and they might make different choices. And to think that that could actually limit them and their child, children, from having a wish granted from a charity like Make-A-Wish, a charity where people have given money towards this. This is cruel, isn't it? Ta-ta. This is Dabu7. I've been getting a lot of emails and people concerned about this spiral that many are comparing to the Norway spiral that we had witnessed years ago. Now, if you've been following my channel closely here throughout the years, I've covered several things like this. And what we've come to find out in many instances and things like this, it checks out to be some kind of rocket launch by someone. Many times here in the United States, off one of the coasts when we've seen this, People would freak out at first, then we come to find out that our military had launched a rocket. And uh, oftentimes they will put on this beautiful show in the sky when they hit certain parts of the atmosphere and all these colors start to emit. Now, with the Norway spiral, there was a lot of confusion, a lot of questions. People had suggested that it was a rocket, but it was unofficial. It was kind of classified and you weren't going to find anything else out about it. This looks dang near, I mean, almost identical to that situation. And what we're hearing is that after doing some digging here, it looks like the Chinese have launched a rocket. And this, this all took place Friday night as people were witnessing this. And it looks like all the timing of the launch, the area, and everything is matching, showing that this was a Chinese rocket that was launched that gave off this spiral. That's the information I've come across thus far. If you guys got anything else, let me know. Dabu7 at yahoo.com. Any other crazy wild images? Anything out there that's hard to explain? Hit me up. I'd love to share it with uh, the masses here and try to get some answers and get to the bottom of this stuff. Nothing embodies the spirit of public service more than our National Health Service and those who work in our social care. It's seen it, it, I've seen it myself in my own constituency. I saw it again just this morning at St Thomas's Hospital, where I met doctors and nurses and volunteers who have moved mountains this past year. Now they're helping us vaccinate our way out of this pandemic. Mr Deputy Speaker, there remains a big task ahead of us to restore our freedoms. Freedoms that, save for the greatest of circumstances, no government should ever wish to curtail. So my task is to help return the economic and cultural life that makes this country so great, while of course protecting life and our NHS. Now that task has been made all the more difficult by the Delta variant which we now know makes up some 95% of new cases in the UK. Not only does it spread more easily, but the evidence points to a higher risk of those who have not been vaccinated needing hospital treatment compared to the previously dominant alpha variant. This narrowing of the 
race between the virus and the vaccine led to the government's difficult decision to pause step four on our roadmap until 19th of July. We're using this extra time to protect as many people as we can. When the government took that decision on June the 14th, over 4.3 million over 40s have had a first dose, but not a second. Now that's down to 3.2 million people over 40. We can all be assured by how many more people are getting the life-saving opportunity that the vaccine offers. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, at this two-week review point, I want to update the House on our progress to our roadmap to freedom. Mr Deputy Speaker, our aim is that around two-thirds of all adults in this country will have had both doses by 19th July. We're bringing forward second doses and bringing forward our target for first doses too, so we can meet that 19th July goal. For Gru, being a supervillain isn't easy. We stole the Statue of Liberty! The small one from Las Vegas. He has to control... Listen up, please! ...an army of minions. Dave? He has to outsmart... Ah, what? ...a ruthless archenemy. He shrink, Ray! No! I hate that guy. And he's about to inherit... Hello? Three small problems. You will not cry or sneeze or burp or fart. No annoying sounds. Does this count as annoying? <sighs> Fight it now! From Universal Pictures... We are going to pull off the true crime of the century. We are going to steal the moon! And Chris Melodondri, executive producer of Ice Age and Horton Hears a Who. I shrink the moon, I grab the moon, I sit on the toilet with what? <laughs> You're funny. Go! <laughs> By the time I'm done with Groot, he's gonna be begging for mercy. Go! We have to warn him. And fast! This summer, just because he's a bad guy, doesn't mean he's a bad guy. Three little kittens started to yawn. Now make them drink the milk. Wow, this is garbage. You actually like this? Despicable Me in eye-popping 3D. All you gotta do is knock down that spaceship there. Uh -huh. Oh, somebody's got a frowny face. Okay, my turn. Knocked over! It's so fluffy! This big guy. This big. This big. This. This. Despicable me.